Welcome to part four of our lectures on the electron transport chain. This diagram shows the transfer of electrons via cytochrome C from complex three to complex four in the electron transport chain. The evolution of complex four in our mitochondria is fascinating. Our mitochondria actually contain all of the machinery needed to build their own proteins. They have DNA, ribosomes, and everything. In our cells, the three core subunits of cytochrome C oxidase are built inside our mitochondria, but the remaining 10 small chains are built outside in the cytoplasm using our nuclear DNA and then added to the mitochondria later. So our mitochondria build a bacteria-like enzyme, which our cells then decorate with other proteins to customize its function. I don't know about you, but my mind is blown. Overall, complex four is involved in the oxidation of cytochrome C, the reduction of molecular oxygen to form water, and the continued pumping of protons into the inner membrane space of the mitochondria. Complex four, or cytochrome C oxidase, houses several different cofactors involved in the reaction mechanism. Two heme groups, heme B and heme A3, and two copper cofactors, copper A and copper B. Active site tyrosines and histidines are also important in the reaction mechanism. The reduction of oxygen to water is achieved through a two-part reaction. In the first part, two electrons are dropped off at the complex by two molecules of cytochrome C. This reoxidizes the molecules of cytochrome C so they can pick up more electrons from complex three. The two electrons move through the copper A cofactor, the heme B cofactor, and land in the heme A3 and copper B cofactors. This energy release causes the pumping of two protons into the inner membrane space. The copper B and heme A3 cofactors make up the active site of the enzyme. When in the reduced state, the copper and iron from these cofactors can coordinate with molecular oxygen to form a peroxide intermediate. One electron from the pi bond between the oxygen residues will coordinate with the electron housed on the copper B cofactor, and the other electron from the pi bond will coordinate with the electron housed on the iron within the heme A3 cofactor. In the second half of the reaction, two more cytochrome C molecules drop off two more electrons to the catalytic center. This causes the pumping of two more protons to the inner membrane space. It also allows the breaking of the peroxide bond and the formation of the hydroxyl copper and hydroxyl iron intermediates. The metal oxygen linkages are unstable and the electrons will pick up two more protons from the matrix of the mitochondria to complete the formation of two water molecules. This completes one round of enzymatic activity by complex four. With the energy from only one NADH or one FADH, it is only possible to finish half of the reaction at complex four. This would harvest two electrons from complex three, partially reduced molecular oxygen, and pump two protons across the membrane into the inner membrane space. With completion of the full reaction, you would need two molecules of NADH or FADH2 to make two molecules of water, pump a total of four protons across the membrane, and reoxidize a total of four molecules of cytochrome C. This is a cartoon summary of the entire electron transport chain. Complex one harvesting electrons derived from NADH of the Krebs cycle to produce one molecule of coenzyme Q and pump four protons across the membrane. Complex two harvests the electrons from the succinate dehydrogenase reaction of the Krebs cycle and feeds them through FADH2 and other iron sulfur clusters to generate one molecule of coenzyme Q. 
The molecules of coenzyme Q are used to reduce cytochrome C at complex 3 through the Q cycle. Complex 3 also pumps 4 protons per NADH or FADH2. Cytochrome C then transfers electrons to complex 4 that reduces molecular oxygen to water and pumps two more protons to the inner membrane space for each NADH or FADH2 molecules consumed. Overall, for one NADH molecule, 10 protons are pumped across the membrane, resulting in one turn of the ATP synthase protein and the generation of three ATP molecules that are located in the matrix of the mitochondria. We will see that there is an energy cost to move the ATP to the cytoplasm where it can be used more efficiently to do work such as muscle contraction. FADH2 on the other hand bypasses complex 1 and does not itself pump protons. Thus it is worth less currency when it comes to the production of ATP. One FADH2 is not capable on its own to generate one turn of the ATP synthase enzyme. Thus, in estimation, each FADH2 is worth approximately 1.8 ATP molecules, although you have to make them three at a time. In the next lecture, we will explore the structure and activity of the ATP synthase enzyme and see how ATP is transported into the cytosol.